So it's been a quiet transfer window for AFC Bournemouth, or has it? Could there be some activity on the way? What do we think of the transfers that have happened already? And what positions do we think we need to strengthen in? Welcome to Back of the Net. This is The Lowdown. So with the Cherry sitting relatively pretty in the Premier League table, the need to reinforce is probably a little bit less than previous seasons where we've either been trying to stave off relegation or hunt promotion. But there's been a little activity and there could be some more in the next few days. Welcome. My name's Sam Davis. My name's Tom Jordan. How are you, Tom? Yeah, very well. It feels like a while since football just because it was a cup game. Yeah. It feels a little bit different. But yeah, I think uh, last few days of the window, so interesting because it always baffles me but I, I guess teams play poker a little bit but nothing and in the last few days anything can happen yeah. do you know what I mean but um, yeah I think you're right in what you said mate we're probably not as it's not as needed as it has been from God no, like you said promotion relegation we've always been more desperate so nice place to be but let's see what happens I think Sky Sports News will have been fairly disappointed so far because I know they've got their timers on screen but really the window as a whole has been pretty Dead. boring hasn't it nothing happening no I think FFP and all that stuff's playing a part and yeah I've seen them kind of do their transfer shows and you think oh, they're really trying there because they're struggling <laughs> uh, probably one of the biggest ones was a loan that we might see coming uh, coming up because Calvin Phillips has gone to West Ham yes so um, we might get away of it again you remember the uh, first game of the season we played him just before War Pro Went, yes, yeah. I almost feel like oh, we, it might be a little bit too early from the start, so yeah. we might get away with it again. But yeah, that's that was a good one for them. But yeah, really, there hasn't been much major news, but it always heats up in the last few days, mate. So we're going to be tackling those that have left us, the players mm. that we've been linked with, where maybe we are looking short, and the potential activity that could be coming in the next few days. Will there be any movements? How does our FFP position mm. affect things? These are all conversations that we will have. If you haven't seen our FFP video, the card is at the top of the screen, because that pretty much tells you where we're at. Right, firstly, confirmed confirmed in through the door James Hill back from Blackburn yeah, he's back he's back and he's injured um, <laughs> <laughs> not ideal but no, listen it was a uh, it made sense I felt uh, Blackburn weren't in a great place so probably not an amazing club to be at at this current moment he's come back because he can obviously he's defensive cover but he kind of feel any of them positions at the back so it just made sense he's our player mm. and was doing well there so and then he started had to start straight away mm. thought he looked all right at left back absolutely then had to play at right back thought he was looking good and then got injured real blow for for him he looked really emotional didn't he when he come off and that um, may dictate what you know our need to yeah. maybe strengthen in that position we don't know or maybe affect the players that might have been going out mm. that might not be anymore but yeah he's shown that he's adept to step up and yeah, uh, yeah, it's a real blow. yeah can't wait well, to have him back literally since he's come back obviously he's got injured and Max aaron has got injured mm. in, them t in them two games we've had since he's come back two fullbacks have got injured so yeah it's a, it's a worry there so I'm sure there would have been a, a plan if injuries are worse and etc we'll see but hopefully he's not too serious thinking about for a little bit but yeah, good seeing back, mate. And he's one for the future, definitely. I think he's one where, yeah. you know, we're not, there's been a lot of youngsters that you kind of bring in and think, oh, maybe we've overgrown him a little yeah. bit. I think he's one that's coming with us. So um, yeah, looking forward to seeing more from him. In terms of confirmed exits then, one of the names that I suppose took me by surprise, really, especially on a permanent, mm. was Nathan Mariah Welsh. Uh, yeah. He's a player that's not really featured for the for the first team in, in quite a while, but he's gone to Hibs on a permanent. Yeah, I think it kind of makes sense. I think you, you look at a youngster and kind of feel like, or oh, probably just alone, see how he develops. But he's actually been here a while now. Mm. He's not one of like kind of the new emerging youngsters. He's been here a while. He's been in a few squads. He went out at Newport, I believe it was. Yes, that's right. Um, and I think he got their young player of the season. They really liked him. And then he came back, he got a really bad injury. Yeah. He's only just started coming back in. Obviously, we've got links with his, as we'll move on to with someone else. But yeah, probably thought it was going to be a loan. But I, I think that'd be a good deal for him. I don't think... Um, if we're being honest, I don't think he ever would have broke through here. You sort of wonder with certain players that go out on loan, I'm talking about the youth, some of the young lads, whether they can really slot in with AFC Bournemouth at a later date. And sometimes you just think, yeah. I'm not sure that's the case. And especially when you look at the quality of our squad yeah. as a whole now, you think, where, you know, whereabouts is the path here? Exactly. Probably, pro probably more of a chance back in the day, but now it's getting more and more yeah. untenable for them to have that chance. Um, a player that has been sent out to Hibs, albeit on loan, is Super Emiliano Marcondes. And Tom, 
He's played already mm. there and apparently getting rave reviews. Yeah, they all um, were stating that they felt he looked a level above, which was really interesting because he's had a really long-term injury, barely got any minutes. I remember seeing him in the development game and thought, oh, he doesn't look sharp at I all. I thought, yeah. Uh, considering what we know he's got in him. I mean, listen, you've got to remember, when he was fully fit, he was a blimmin' good championship player, not only for us, but for Brentford. He took them up. Scored loads of goals as well. Yeah, so he's always been a real consistent good player in the championship. So no disrespect, but in the Scottish League... You would think so, but it's really good to see that he's already looking sharp. Um, good move for him. Yeah, it's loan, but I think he's out of contract and he'll probably end up going there. I can't see him back in a Bournemouth yeah. shirt, but he's always like, he's one of them people that without loads of loads of moments, he's just loved, yeah. um, which is great for him. I think he's a, he's a good bloke on and off the pitch, isn't he? so I think he'll do really well for them. And Hibs are probably liking us at the moment, yeah. mate. Um, you know, so yeah, I thought I think I think that'd be a good move for him, and yeah, you, they might see like him and Mariah Welsh as a centre midfield partnership. That would be people. Who was the ex Bournemouth player that used to play in the middle of the midfield for him earlier? Marvin Bartley. Marvin Bartley also coached there as well. Yeah, maybe. that's right. And you know what? So geographically, uh, geographically, he's closer to Denmark as well, so nearer to home, which I'm sure he'll love. Yes. Another person who's gone out on loan. This has obviously been widely reported. Hamed Traore mm. gone to gone to Napoli. On loan, uh, and they got the option to buy. And he's a player that has um, played few and far between for the Cherries, but uh, this is needed for him. It is, and you know, uh, needed for us as well. Yeah, definitely. And I almost think we really need him to do well there because we need that option to buy to be triggered, really, because otherwise I don't see how I mean, we spent a lot of money on him. Yeah. Um, Listen, I think circumstances. Obviously, he's moved to a new country and I, I probably think it hasn't worked the way he thought. Mm. Then he gets a, a really bad illness. Um, and obviously, I saw at the weekend, even though he's a Napoli player, he's out with illness. Yeah. So I'm assuming it can't be long because you wouldn't get someone in alone no, if they can play for months exactly. and months. Um, but I really hope it works out for him. I think it's going to be one of them things where he's still young. He'll probably end up a good player in Europe. But it's just one of them things that didn't work. It just didn't work. It never did. There were flashes, weren't there? But I never felt like he was ever going to be a player that was going to be a regular for us. So I hope he does well there, mate. And uh, even more so, hope that they buy him. Mm, I think it's always helpful to help out like smaller clubs like, like Napoli. Yeah. Um, in the same breath, Saints as well. Uh, Joe Rothwell has gone there on loan. He, he has played for them, didn't he? He started in the yeah. FA Cup, didn't he? Their yeah. draw against Watford. Their draw, last kick. Um, I was ready. I was all ready when they nearly went out of the cup to go, oh, Agent Rothwell. And then they scored late. But yeah, he started in that one. He came off after like 60 minutes or so. Yeah, and then they seemed to turn it around. And I know that the first couple of games out, I think the other one was like 15 minutes off the bench. They've said, well, Southampton fans anyway that are there have said he doesn't look at the pace yet. But I think that's understandable. He hasn't yeah. played a lot of football. Um, he's been a fringe player for us, but not even really starting cup games. Like he's, he really hasn't played a lot of football, so it's going to take him time. But with our midfield, can you really see him getting? Oh no, he a won't chance. play for us again. I'll be very surprised. Um, whether it's Southampton or not, I think that will depend on whether the, what league they're in as well. Okay. But Blackburn, I tell you that even though the way he left, he was a top midfielder for them, and they were a lot better when they had him in their midfield. And we've seen little. It's been a shame because he's had injury problems. We've always had people above him in the pecking order. Mm. When he has played, you see little glimmers. Yeah, you do. For me personally, not enough. Um, but I think he's a another one that's going to be a good, solid championship player. If Saints were to go up, do I see them going for Roth, trying to get Roth? Well, probably mm. not, actually. But it's a move that suited all parties, really. I think Southampton are in a position that we've been in recently in terms of when you just want to get up, you've got to just add to that squad. Yeah. I remember us getting people like, <laughs> like tried to get Rothwell, but he had come in the season. But your Dembele's, your Moore, Campwell, yeah. we didn't even need them. No, we didn't. But you're, they, you're so close to getting promotion. Just make sure. Just do and, what you uh, can. I think that's what they're doing there. Okay, so those are at the time of recording everything that's been confirmed. Mm. What about the rumours then? Well, look, there's been a name that's been linked with the Cherries. Even Bill Foley's mentioned this player himself, not by name but by country. Oscar Zambrano, yeah. uh, and he was linked with a few clubs, wasn't he? Yeah, I think Luton were the favourites at one point. Manchester United. Yeah, I think United Man United were looking at him. He's obviously a one of them highly rated uh, kind of young midfielders. They seem to be more coming through from kind of South America now, mm. nowadays. And I know, you know, Brighton have got Saicedo and, yeah. and players like that. So I know he's highly thought of. Kind of didn't think much of it. And then, as you say, Bill Foley in one of his interviews says, we're going to get a young South American in. that will." Which I think, well, that's a risk. Because now it doesn't look like it. We're not sure if it's going to happen. But he, he said he, he said we weren't going to get relegated and we didn't. Yeah, exactly. And, but hey, I don't know. So sometimes I think he's a... A bit too naive much. even yeah. a bit too transparent sometimes. But yeah. you know what? For us to be all excited is great, but usually mm. when you're linked with players of that kind of young calibre, 
it's not going to be playing for us. They're going to no. be loaned out straight away, and that's the benefit of this yeah. multi-club model. Yeah, I think it's it's one of them. I think people are always, which I understand, you want new players, it's exciting. And when you get a youngster and send them out on loan, you think, oh, whatever. But I like the fact that that's thinking long-term as well. Mm. Because if you're getting you know older players all the time, you think, oh, God, they're bloody you know, short-term. They're just trying to get someone in, trying to get someone in. Um, like we've done in the past, I think getting a youngster in would be like, okay, they seem one yeah. for the future. You know, they're not muck- mucking around here. Um, so yeah, we'll see what happens to that one. It, it sounds like we're probably favourites, but also sounds like his agents trying to you know yeah. get the best deal for him. Understandably, um, I think it will be one for the future for sure. See if that happens. That that could be the most likely maybe mm. of the rumours. We'll see. We'll see. So in terms of our multi club club model, uh, Roman Favre, of course, will know. Uh, Chelsea fans will know that we. We purchased him and then just loaned him out to Lauren. And yeah. this is maybe connected to a rumoured departure as well, which mm. we'll come on to a bit later on. But there are suggestions that we may recall him yeah. from his loan. Lorient, by the way, not doing great in yeah. League A, are, are they? Are they still bottom of the table? Uh, bottom of the league of time recording, yeah. So at the weekend, they were winning to the 93rd minute. And Andre Ayew, who was ex-Swansea, wasn't he? He scored for um, whoever they were playing. Yeah. But um, yeah, they're struggling. Um, so it sounds... So yeah, normally you'd think, well, they're not going to let one of their best players go. But it, it just sounds like apparently he's not happy there. He wants to go. So I think it's one of them where we've obviously promised to give him to Laurent for the season. Yeah. But if he's not playing because he's unhappy and there's a bit of unrest and he's not going to play for him, he might as well have him back. Yeah. Um, or at least going somewhere else. I don't know what, what you can do with that. You know, you don't know. It's difficult when there's this, um, you know, with the multi club thing, you kind of think, oh, what, what does that mean contractually to can we recall him early? Can we send him somewhere else? I'm not yeah. sure. Um, if he's not playing for them, we may as well for the squad, I guess. He's going to be our player at the end of the season anyway. Um, but yeah, strange one. I know it's a weird one because Hibs are actually loving Bournemouth for Bill Foley. <laughs> yeah. Laurie ate us. Um, <laughs> but yes, it's not, not going well for them on the pitch at the moment. But they could be, you know, they got to remember, they wouldn't have got Favre at all if it wasn't yeah. for us because they couldn't afford him. So, yeah, I'm not sure if that'll happen unless there's um, more outgoings because he won't get in the team. No. But if he's not going to kick a ball for Lauren, you might as well get him in and get him into yeah, the squad, I true. guess. Very true. Um, what about this next one, mate? Because I've never heard anything about this player. Yeah, Joe Scally. Uh, it was only... Did, hang on a second, one of your neighbours... Uh, no, I don't watch neighbours. Is there some called Scally? Oh, no, that was Joe Scully, wasn't it? Was that Joe Scully? Yeah, it was. Oh, Joe Scully. Do you remember? What, do you never no, watch Neighbours? No. Get with the programme, mate. Uh, I like it. It makes me feel younger. You know what? It's on Amazon again now, by the way. Is that the one that Minogue was on? Yeah, yes, Jason Donovan. That's it, Dono. Carl Kennedy, Susan Kennedy, Don't. Harold Bishop, yeah. Madge, Mrs Don't. Mangle. Yeah, stop now. I just know Minogue um, and right. Donovan. But um, Joe Scully, he's a young American fullback. Only, you know, brief rumours, and I think it was more kind of links because of the fact with, as we mentioned, the fullback issues. Um, he's American, which is probably going to get more links to Americans these days, um, understandably. He could play both sides as a fullback, which is very helpful considering yeah. the, you know, we're having problems at left back and then they're back and we have problems at right back. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's only young, he's American, like I say. He's doing well at uh, Mönchengladbach uh, okay. um, in Germany. So, yeah, I, I think it's an understandable link, but there's nothing that's really come to the fore with that. But when I saw a few little links, I thought that does kind of tick the boxes. Yeah. Young. American can play both fullback positions. It made sense to me, but at his age, doing well in Bundesliga, I think that wouldn't be cheap. I wouldn't have thought. Don't know what his contract situation is, but that was a little brief link that I think was worth mentioning. You know what my concern is, Tom? Like yep. none of these players are strikers, and what if Dom Solanke gets injured? I thought that we'd at least get linked with one striker of some kind. <laughs> Not grabbing Callum Wilson, but could he? Could he? I'd be no. shocked. I'd be shocked, but I think no. it's worth mentioning. Um, it's worth mentioning. And can I tap into one of the links of outgoings at this point? Go on, then. Uh, which you also uh, mentioned in terms of the Favreau deal. Go on. Rumours of Billing being unhappy, which... Oh, would, bye, which, my lover. Which I would get. Bye, my friend. Um, Heather, that's for you. Yeah. You have been the one. It would be oh. sad. I, th- I get it because he's a bloody good footballer. He's been good for us. And it's not happening for him this season. Um uh, you know, whatever you want to say about Billing, because there's been virtually every season he's been here, we find a way to get him in the team. We've looked better. Mm. Well, he's, he's done well off the bench in a few games, particularly obviously at Man United. Um, but you'd say Clive that's over him in the way mm. we play, and then you search in the cup, you think, well, Scott's probably over him in the mm. 10 as well. And he's a top player. The only um, promising thing is that he signed a new deal recently, which means he'd cost a bit of that. So what I'm thinking is, 
the main club linked are Newcastle. Because obviously the club, the manager at Newcastle signed him for Bournemouth. Yes. They have lost Joe Linton till pretty much the end of the season. We all know what happened with Tonali. But Eddie Hour said, and we all know with FFP, Newcastle can't really bring anyone in if they don't let anyone go. He's on a massive contract, so he's going to cost too much money for most clubs. So could Eddie go? If he's not happy, can I have him on, maybe like, can I just have him on loads in the season to play him? Which is weird because yeah. Newcastle better us because of their issues. And we're all right up front. So we give you Callum. Do you want Callum back for a bit? It's very unlikely, but worth mentioning because if you, when you tap all them links together, you go, maybe. But Callum would go from being a backup at Newcastle to a backup at Bournemouth. Yeah. You, we don't know, but it's just one that has been a few little whispers around, so you never know. I think more likely with Callum and with Philip, I see them both potentially departing their clubs at the end of the season yeah. rather than now. I think it's only just come to the fore, a few days left. Don't see it quite happening, but okay. never know. Okay, then. So those are the rumours in. So the rumours out there. Yeah. Look, we, we've mentioned Phil Billing yeah. already. We've tackled him. His dad's been tweeting a few Apparently things so. that have been a bit mysterious by the sounds of it. Yeah, I think there's always seems to be a bit of mystery with the with the billings, doesn't there? Um, we've had a few or Instagram, Philip, it should be. yeah, Instagram stuff in the past. So yeah, I don't read too much into it um, to be honest with you. But there's, listen, there's no doubt that that he's going to be. He was a ma- I mean, of a monumental reason we stayed in the Premier League. Yeah, he's not going to be happy that he's not playing. Mm. Equally, I've mentioned this recently, not so much with Phil, but with other players that are kind of saying about their lack of minutes, go, have you seen how well we're doing? Yeah. And why are we going to change too much? So that's one of them things, really. I can't really... Can Does Phil deserve to be starting at the moment? Mm, no. no. Um, it's what it is. But yeah, he's a good player, so I I'm, understand he's going to be frustrated. And maybe the fact that his contract was going down, we've probably given him reassurances to make sure he signs it. He's now signed it, he's not playing. Yeah. So maybe there's a bit of that. Yeah. But yeah, he's obviously one, as we mentioned. And then in his kind of position in midfield, we've already lost Rothwell and Traore, um, and Mark Connors, and Mariah Welsh, but Gavin Kilkenny looks to be off. Yeah, that's right. And there, Peter Rourke this morning tweeted uh, that sources, according to Football Insider, suggest that he could be going... To Fleetwood Town, yeah, uh, which they're they're kind of in the relegation scrap at bottom of League One, are they? Yeah, they're bottom of League One. They are bottom. Um, okay, I think it's, and they're managed by Charlie Adam. Yeah, who's I mean, he was better, but a similar footballer, I'd say, like yeah. quite good on the ball, a gav, so maybe he likes that sort of player. So I think we all, what's weird is we all know in the short space of time we had him playing in the Championship, we thought well, he's clearly a Championship player easily. Went to Stoke, didn't happen. Yeah. Then went to League One with Charlton. I know the name sounds bigger than Fleetwood, but they're League One as well and not yeah. doing great. Can play, can get in the team. I wonder why that is, because he, I mean, weird he was one. really good for us in the Championship. It and then was. all of a sudden he just didn't play. What's, what's a weird one with Gav is I think he clearly needs to be playing at a lower standard to the Premier League, to Bournemouth. But I always felt the reason it worked when he was with us in the Championship is because we had all the ball, because we were one of the better teams. So we just kept the ball, ticked it around. When he's going to teams that are in a scrap and don't have the ball, is he the best off the ball midfielder? Mm. He's neat and tidy, but is he aggressive enough? No. Is he not. quite lightweight? Yeah. Probably. So that may be why. I'll tell you what he can do, though. He can get a bucket of red balls and swap them with a bucket of yellow balls really, really quickly. And, and I wonder that if that's been is... seen. I do wonder if that's that's part yeah. of it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, listen, I think I think it would be a good move for him. I, I like Gav, but I've got to a point now, he's not going to play for I just want him to go and play blooming football. Mm. It's, it is, regardless of whether you fit, what standard you think you should be at, it's ma- absolutely madness. The lack, lack of football, he's 23, yeah, yeah. that this guy's played. I want him to go in there and play football. So yeah, I think that'd be a good move for him. Um, and yeah, I don't think you see him in a Bournemouth shirt again anyway, mate. Mm. Shane, uh, someone that we've got at the moment rumoured to be going, albeit he's only on loan with us, is Unit Radu. Yeah. Uh, he, he's been linked with Saudi, is it? Yeah, Al Shabab. Al Shabab. Um, uh, I like saying that, Shabab. It sounds yeah. it's quite, um, what's the word, satisfying. It is. Um, look, he's had a yeah. few and five. He, he has had a Premier League start, hasn't he? Yeah, beat Burnley, mate. Huge. I mean, he let in six against City. And also the EFL Cup, was it in, that was done by Nunes as well, D? Yeah, but he also, you know, played at Swansea, kept a clean sheet against yeah, Stoke. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now, listen, I think he's um, down the pecking order. Yeah. Technically, it wouldn't be us letting him go. It would be Intel, wouldn't it? He's only on loan. It totally makes sense because, you know, he's, if, if you let a player go on loan and he's not playing, you'll send him out somewhere else. I, can't I, mean, I don't know if we're Inter. paying, his, I don't if we're don't paying his wages, maybe, but if we are, that's a, I'm sure that'd be a pretty penny, maybe. Yeah, I think even even if 
we had not paid it full, we were paying at least half, I would have thought, to enter. Um, so, yeah, Saudi are probably more than happy to, to pay his wages. I haven't seen enough to really judge him as a goalkeeper, to be honest. But when we've had issues with, with Neto, with Charles being out alone, he's never pushed enough to yeah. be a starter. I never felt like when he come in, oh, we've got, an, I've got a top goalkeeper here. So it hasn't really worked. And if you're kind of like the number three, number four for Romania, I don't think you're that great. No. I, I can't see him playing for us again, mate. So, yeah, wish him all the best if he go somewhere else because I can't really see him playing for Inter Milan either. Elsewhere, Kiefer Moore, various championship clubs have been looking to get him. I'm sure they would take him permanently, yeah. but loan seems to be yeah. the uh, buzzword for most of our players at the moment, yeah. for most of these players on the list. Uh, but that would require us to be getting someone like Callum Wilson in. Well, I, I just don't see most reports kind of outside of Bournemouth are saying... Uh, you know, such, 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 such link with Kiefer Moore, who is expected to leave for mm. the window. But I would say that's highly unlikely if we don't get someone in. Mm. Because you know, Dom Sankey, who we're very lucky, has been relatively fit. He has had some knocks lately. Mm. If he were to get injured, what do we do? I mean, yes, people would say, Semenya could play there. Mm. I remember seeing him first half, it's only half, 45 minutes, but against Stoke in the Cup. Mm. Came off at half-time because he couldn't do that lone striker role. And he's been, I think we also forget, he's been pivotal out wide. Yeah. Um, I just wonder what we would do. Because I mean, uh, so, isn't that a replacement option. No, but at the moment, if Kiefer were to go and Don would get injured, it's Semenya or Clive at playing through the middle, mm. probably. So I don't see the club thinking that would be enough. So, And remember that I think at the end of the summer, we were quite happy to let Kiefer go to the Championship mm. if we got someone in at the time it was Pats and Dakar. Yeah. And when they all fell through, we said, well, we can't let him go if we can't get in. So it's one that could happen, but it would, as you say, mate, it would require, require a replacement um, on our side, I'm sure of it. But it doesn't surprise me. I think every single championship club would take Kiefer more because, listen, whatever happens to Kiefer, I mean, I've seen a few things on Twitter, people saying, always oh, a club legend. Calm down. Yeah. I mean, he did uh, score some huge goals. He and, did, and but you're a club legend if Kiefer's a club legend. To be fair to Calm him, down. also, that, I mean, some of his performances have been a little bit abject when he's come on. But then in terms of the numbers when he has it, like, you know, scoring at Crystal Palace, yeah, etc., he, like he's always ended up on the yeah, score sheet. So. Big. And, I, and I would say even um, people don't talk about as much because he didn't get the goal. But I remember at Forest, um, looked like it was going to peel out to a draw and Solanke scored late. But we brought him on and it made us, we were putting balls in more and they were worried about Kiefer yeah. and then Don gets free and gets a header. Yeah. So I do think he's, he's made some decent performance off the bench. He's also had some howlers off the bench. Is he Premier League standard? Probably not. But I think it's the way we play. I think, no disrespect, by the way, because you play the way you want to play and they're doing well. At Luton, I think he'd look good. Because mm. if you're putting balls in the box all the time... It'd be brilliant. And I think if we had, say... So I'd say their Stop main... Stop being disrespectful. I'd say their main striker is Adebayo. Yeah. I don't, I don't think he'd look brilliant for us. Because yeah. the way we played on Sue, yeah. and there's probably um, a case for that with, say, no, Brooksy, who we'll come on to, in terms of the way we play. But Kiefer Moore would get in any championship side and would score goals. He always has in the championship. He is, I will want him to do really well in his career because the promotion goal, the impact at Swansea, he was massive, absolutely. absolutely. He's Kenwin Jones-like, but done more yeah. um, in that short space of time. And there's even games like, if we end up throwing away the lead, which wasn't his fault, he scored two at home to Tottenham last season. Yeah, we were 2-0 yeah. up. And I remember speaking to Tottenham fans when we played in the reverse, going, oh, we're just happy that Kiefer's not available. Yeah, yeah. I was going, what? That's, that's they, mad. Yeah, yeah, ripped them apart. So You didn't think of Dango, though, did you? Hey. But no, Kiva's, Kiva's been good for us and he always was going to be back up to Dom, mate. Simple as that. It's not his fault. He's not Dom Solanke. Uh, David Brooks, you just mentioned. Yeah. Okay. Um, this is weird. Like, so Kiva Moore, I don't, I don't see as a, a Bournemouth player of the sort of long-term future. But David Brooks, I, I m yeah. maybe would put in that category. But then as time goes on, you're thinking, has he got enough? And it's so frustrating. Sometimes you see it mm. and you think, he's world-class. And you hear players like Alex Scott saying... He's one of the best played. players I've, I've played with or trained with. And then, yeah, in fits and starts, he had a brilliant game. And you know what you said on the vlog pre-match, you said in the preview, this is where I want David Brooks to shine. And he did. Yeah, Some great yeah. assists, a really well-taken goal as well. I thought he did excellent. And uh, uh, by the way, there was a ball in that game. It was in the second half where he was running across the pitch like towards the main stand. And then with the outside of his left boot, yeah. played a curling ball to Sinistera. And it was, it was beautiful to watch. I was like, that is prime Brooksy. It was brilliant. But... You, you can see with the squad we've got, he's not going to get the minutes that he probably wants. Therefore, a championship loan could be favourable, perhaps. It would make sense. I, t I get, I get why it's linked. And again, with Kiefer, every championship club would want David Brooks, and I can see why David Brooks would want it. You've got to remember as well; these Welsh players we're talking about, they might get into the Euros. They got a playoff. 
So they need to be playing. Yeah. And Brooks has got a little bit of more competition than, say, the Kiefer and Meps because obviously ex born player Harry Wilson, they've Huge. got Brian Johnson, they've yeah, got a few players um, in them sort of areas. But it's a weird one, isn't it? I, I, as, you, as you said, mate, I was, I was kind of screaming of Brooks' love a game because I felt like kept saying he wanted minutes, but every time you play, you're not very good because he hasn't been. Yeah. And then, so a week ago, I'd say it's not going to work here. I think he is so talented, yeah. technically unbelievable footballer. But I thought since Andoni's come in, he hasn't looked like he, he fits the system. I don't think it's going to work as much as I think he's going to be an unbelievable footballer in the future. I don't think it's going to work here. And then a couple of days later, mm. he is dazzling. And now I think, well, we can't let him go. And that's for, but that's that's exactly what we needed from him. Yeah. Um, and that will push him now. So now he can knock on the door and go, do you see what I did in the week for you? Am I going to get more minutes? And he said himself that he would like to be playing down here. Yeah. He would like to be playing here, but he just acknowledges he needs to yep. be playing. So, you know, that part of that decision is with Andoni, but it's part of his, you know, he needs to impress as well. Yeah. And what, what's interesting is because of the, it's weird how it all kind of fits in, but because of the fullback issues we're having as well, we might end up having to go, we've done it with Dango, obviously. Tavernier might have to play at fullback for a bit, which offers a spot for him. True, yeah. These little things, if Billin is not happy or not playing, and Cliver has to play central, is another one. You know, if Semenu has to go up top a little bit, we've got. So there's more options. I think I'd be very, very surprised if he went this late now, I think, especially after his performance. Mm. I think Andoni will be going, he's too important to the squad, mm. um, and he will get enough minutes, I think. And I think he's shown now, particularly if hopefully, touch wood, we'll be, we are, and we'll be pretty much safe. Hopefully, we'll continue this cup run. Mm. He's going to get enough minutes for me. Yeah, he's going to get enough so to to prove himself and then go. You know, because I'm not being funny against our next game. He's made a case to go. Could he start? Yeah, we don't yeah, know. No, I so I think he'll stay, but I understand why there's links. Uh, so another Welsh yeah. player, Chris Meppham, uh, was linked with Sheffield United. Yeah. However, that seems to have died down, and I've got a feeling it's probably going to peter out into nothing, given the defensive problems that we've got. Yeah, um, I thought it made sense, Sheffield United being linked with him, because, again, touch wood, but because they're not a competitor in the relegation at the moment, because we're okay. too far away, it's not like we're strengthening a rival, so to speak. And Sheffield United, listen, I think... People think about Mets, obviously Championship. I think he's proven, he's been a few little scraps. I think he's proven he, he's a decent centre-half. And Sheffield United, I mean, only recently in the, in the Cup, they played all right, but they leaked four at yeah. home and they leaked goals. Um, and I can see why they would look at that as a stopgap option. Yeah. He wants to be playing. I do think with, with Mets, the slight difference is he's never been a regular for Bournemouth mm. and he's always played for Wales. Yeah. I think they haven't got enough options there to real tinker. So I think he'll still play for Wales. And as you said, mate, I think the issue now for him, if he did want to go and play, is God, we've got too many injuries. And I actually think he's got a hell of a chance of starting this week. Yeah, Probably time. bless him at fullback. Yeah. He's got, Chris, we need you again. It, it's that kind of situation. He knows that's his role. That's mad, isn't it? But it is mad. But then equally, I would say the Mets, because we've all said, um, as a fan base out on this channel, that I feel for him because he always has to just come in when we're desperate mm -hmm. to kind of come in, save us, and out you go. But... Senesi had a suspension. He's come in a few times. I don't think he's quite taken it. I don't think he's quite taken it. I've never thought when he's come in, oh, Senesi ain't going to get back in now. So, you know, you've got to do a little bit more maybe. But he's got a good chance of playing at the end of the season because of all the injuries we get at the back. Um, can't see it happening, mate. But again, I understand the links. But no, I think he'll be staying put. And also Lloyd Kelly, of course, this isn't exactly been a, a new rumour, but there have been suggestions that he will be leaving. We just wasn't sure whether it's going to be happening now. Still chance, of course, but I think the likelihood is, mm. touch wood, that it won't be now. It'll be at the end of the season. Ideally, he would stay at the club because I honestly love the guy, love the passion he showed after scoring that what a good finish, by the way. Great finish. Brooks to Lloydy. Two players that yeah. might not be here in a few days. But um, what a goal that was. Yeah. And uh, he, he absolutely loved that. And he's going to be a player, I think, mate. That's a bit in the uh, Lerma mould in terms of... Um, yeah. he'll, you know, he'll give it all he's got. Yeah. He won't do a... Fraser. He'll do all he's got. Name to be able to <laughs> no. um, yeah, no, I agree. I agree. I think I've... This is one that I've always kind of... Um, stayed consistent on what I think and that was always that he would do a Lerma. Yeah. I've always felt that because I just I just feel like you never know, it might shock me and he might sign a new contract and that would be better than any signing we could get this month. Yeah. Genuinely it'd be unbelievable if we if we got him to sign a new deal. 
I just always felt that it's never looked like it's going to happen and he's always going to move away eventually. But I've never, a lot of people saying about him going this month, just never felt it happen. Mainly because I think people don't look enough, a bit like Lerma, the fact that people go, oh, we get like 10, 20 million for him now, whereas we're getting for nothing. Right, his agent will be saying to him, Lloyd, don't go now, you idiot. If you wait till the end of the season, you've got a free, the signing on fee you'll get because they're yeah. paying no fee for you will be monumental. Just wait. That's what Lerma did. So there's no, no chance for me that he went. He was going to go this month. I still don't think that'll be the case. There is a slight chance he'd sign a new deal, but I, I believe he'll probably go at the end of the season. And I hope it's abroad just because it might come back to bite us um, because I think he's a top, top player. Injuries aside, um, top, top footballer, whether that be at left back or centre back. Um, and I think he'll have a big part to play for the remainder of the season. But, um, oh, if he can just sign a new deal, that'd be I massive, would mate. Absolutely, be absolutely love massive. that. Be but, huge, um, Lloyd. You know what to do. Look, there's more chance of getting European football with Bournemouth and Spurs, right? Surely. You never know. Right. That's not it, Tom. That's oh, not okay. it. What's um, off the pitch, yep. technical director Richard Hughes oh, yeah. has emerged as a primary candidate to become sporting director at Liverpool FC. Mm. They announced on Friday that their existing sporting director, uh, George Schmachter, will depart Anfield at the end of the January transfer window. So, could he be next in line to leave the club? I mean, it's transfer related, right? Yeah. Um, he's overseen some, some big, big transfers. Yeah, there right. have been... There have been some great signings that we've seen under him. Well, ones that haven't really worked. I don't think that's any different to any other club. Yep. But um, he's been responsible for getting players through the door. And he's got many attributes that I think would be desirable. Mm. Um, especially the fact that he can speak so many different languages. Yeah. He's, he's got the experience. He's built up the experience through uh, being at a Premier League club with AFC Bournemouth. And maybe now's the time. I heard various rumours about Richard Hughes. Like he wasn't going to another club. But he might have started his own consultancy with someone else and then be working alongside multiple Premier League clubs. We don't really know what's happening, but he is leaving AFC Bournemouth. Yeah, we knew that anyway. Didn't we? Yeah, we did. And he would be he would be um, a big loss, would he? Uh, only time will tell on that. I don't know. Uh, I think it's really difficult. Everyone has their opinions. I think it's really, really difficult no, to... Really difficult to, to know, really, whether the recruitment are brilliant or whether they're not very good. Who knows, really? Because we don't know the ins and outs. I... I from what we know, I'd, I'd make a point that I think that on the whole, the players that have been really successful um, in the in the recent have been uh, Alex Scott. I think yeah. everyone in world football knew Alex Scott was bloody brilliant and yeah. you just needed the money to get him. I don't think that's amazing recruitment. No, I okay. think that's more if you've got the funds. True. You've Everyone... I certainly knew Zabani was an upcoming defender. Yeah. If you've got the funds, brilliant. They're obviously doing, um, with, with Blake and Fanner as well, obviously doing doing good stuff in terms of making sure they come over to the club. But if you've got the finances, everyone knows these players are top players. Mm. Um, I think my only question would be the ones that I personally have thought, oh, I don't know who they are. They, I wonder if they're good. Oh, we've just found them out of nowhere. You know, like everyone says about Brighton in particular, just yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. Watara, I'm not sure he's worth the money yet. Yeah. He could be. Uh, Neto, not convinced. Yeah. Um, and Hamid Traore, I didn't know anything about. That That's my only concern. That would be my only thing that I'd go, the players that I personally didn't know who they were, for. thought, oh, is this guy, have you found someone? Haven't quite worked yet, but they're young, so maybe they're more future. Kirkes could be one that I heard a little bit about, but didn't know loads about, so that's that seems yeah, a positive okay. one. Um, but people like Max Aaron's, Alex Scott, we all knew they were good. He just needed the funds. Um, I'd be, at first I thought, be surprised if a club of Liverpool stature would look at Bournemouth, but equally, if Rich Hughes did a really good job, they they could say, they know more than me, so um, makes sense. I also saw, which would make more sense, is that Rich Hughes, um, who's obviously in Bournemouth, is known to be a close friend with associate of Liverpool's former sporting director Michael Edwards. Ah, uh, okay. So, so uh, hang on a sec. <laughs> hang on. Does that explain us? Printing blank check. No, you know what? Brad Link. Smith, Jordan Ive, Dom Solanke. Of course, Dom's proven yep. his worth, but does that explain Nathaniel the connections Klein, with us Liverpool? There's been a lot. Harry Wilson, Nat Phillips as well. Yeah, there's been a lot, mate. So it might make a little bit... Because, yeah. you know, listen, I know people go, oh, you don't, yeah, there's more to that in football. But if you've got someone that, never mind a friend, but well-respected, trust each other, you've got more chance of mm. doing loans with each other and helping each other out a little bit. Um, so that would give it more... Um, 
that would give it a little bit more, I would say, that the fact that he's obviously got a relationship with someone that's been at the club, so maybe he's always been highly thought of. Yeah. Um, potentially. But equally, I would say he was heavily linked to Celtic. Yeah. He was heavily linked to Newcastle. And he never went to either. True. Um, so maybe it is a little bit of just paper talk because they know he's leaving his post. And was, um, you know, I always assumed that Frano was almost his understudy for a while. Yeah. Uh, like almost, you know, learning the trade and then maybe at, he'll come at which through. point he will... Maybe. I don't know. I l- listen, the Tom bottom of it is you and I both don't know enough about recruitment, whether he's bloody brilliant or got a bit lucky. Who knows? But you know what? You can, I think you can only judge recruitment on on what position the team's at in the league. because the, yeah, and, and you know that's what happens with the praise and yeah. negativity towards people like Neil Blake. Like, if we're doing well in the league, no one even mentions him. If we're doing mm. crap, Blake, this is on you. And, and injuries. Yeah. Injuries are the massive thing. So, because now I'm going, right now, I think most Bournemouth fans are going, well, we ain't got enough fullbacks. Yeah. Uh, that's because loads of them are injured. Um, but, but then I mean, I'd, like, I'd, but then you and, and you can make loads of counter points because you go well it's not the recruitment's fault we got loads of injuries no. so then you go yeah but they did give Fredericks to you they he's always been injured yeah. so it's kind of one of them I think at the end of the day man, I don't know enough about it I think if Rich Chute is going to go anyway so I've kind of made peace with that if he goes to Liverpool then I'd probably sit back and go oh just he, maybe he was stuff. highly thought of um, and that's you know listen if Liverpool want you regardless of if you've got a friendship or something you must be doing something right I mean like teams like Liverpool bloody you know, good player you, Rich Chute by the way I loved him as a player it seems like Liverpool, Man United. I mean, they've signed duds before, haven't yeah, they? Of course, you know, yeah. like all teams signed duds. So I think you know, a lot of people do tend to focus on that. But yeah, he is another potential outgoing mm. as well. Where though, when we don't know, but we know that he is going to be Can leaving you, the club. I'm going to do this like just spontaneously. Can you just go on the set? Because we've just got like a Twitter open here. I just noticed it's just refreshed. It's not there anymore. Yeah. The Dan Juma was trending. And I'm just really intrigued. And why not do it? Well, I was going to wait till we finished. Right. But why not? Just I mean, he's probably flirting with somewhere else, go somewhere else. But I just saw he was, he was trending a second ago. Was he? Yeah, he was. I just saw him on there. Oh, what's that? Can you translate that? What? <laughs> it's like what, translation what, things. Oh, we are. To oh, Leon. Dan Juma on loan to Leon potentially. Okay, it's weird that, isn't it? He'll probably put. Leon, I've always loved you. Danger Magic. Du, du, du. I'm sure he's not there in a train. Like, he's probably there in a training top right yeah. now, like kissing the badge. Yeah, and probably. And stuff. Um, Only to sign for someone else. But yeah, that was um, that was interesting. I though. wouldn't have him back. Wouldn't get the team, mate. I, yeah, but like, I think he's overrated. A little bit. I think, I think he's massively overrated. I think last season, the reason why I was all well for it was because we were in a scrap and I thought he could just do a bit of magic yeah. to just, like he did against us for Tottenham, to just get a few goals that might save us. Now, he would not have the required kind of work rate that yeah. Andoni would want anyway. So. There you go then. That is the lowdown on our recent transfer activity. There may be some more ahead. Stand by for any spontaneous video should anything major be occurring. However, plenty of content coming your way, not least the West Ham preview material that starts tomorrow. It's a big Thursday night game at the London Stadium and a busy week or two for Back of the Net with videos aplenty, Tom. Yeah, look forward it's to it. It's interesting. Better, um, better get used to Thursday night football. Nice for them to give us two Thursdays in a row just to get used to Thursday night football. But you know what, though, Tom? Do you, do you remember this time last year we were freezing our balls off outside Dean Court doing a live video? Do you remember? Oh, yeah. God, yeah, yeah, but none of that this time. We're going to be at the London Stadium cheering on the Reds oh, to three points, right? That's what we think. Have the cherries. See you later. See you later. <laughs> Ramsdale? I would have him. I would have him. Wider the mark. (laughs) Uh, Just thought of it then.